I left my notes in my purse so I wouldn't lose them amongst the papers. That's what I learned as an organizer at Love Canal. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, it is my pleasure to introduce Sarah Stranahan, who has been my employee, my funder, and most importantly, my friend. I met Sarah through the Need More Fund, her family's foundation, which was an early funder of my work after Love Canal at the Center for Health, Environment, and Justice. Need More is guided by the belief in power of grassroots leadership and democratic rights of communities to organize for their own solutions. Almost a decade later, in 1993, I hired Sarah. It was a great move as development associate for CHEJ. At the time, she was a single mom with three young children living in Cape Cod. She had survived the nightmare of lead contamination in her own home and was passionate about helping people that had been affected by toxins. While I recognize that Sarah was full of energies and ideas, and everyone who knows her can agree with that, I'm sure, <laughs> I was not fully aware of the work that she was also doing in philanthropy at the time. She was leading Need More's pioneering mission related invested program, investment programs, which made them the first foundation to be 100% mission aligned in the early 1990s. She was serving on the board of the National Committee for Responsible Philanthropy, and she was working with the National Network of Grantmakers to publish Best Practices in Social Change Philanthropy, a study which advocated philanthropic boards to become democratic and diversified with general support grants, multi-year funding, and respectful communications and aggressive payouts. As you can see, Sarah was ahead of her time, and she did all of this as a single mom raising three young sons in Brewster, Massachusetts. A few years after she left CHEJ, Sarah got involved in a campaign finance reform. She stepped into a Massachusetts statewide campaign for public financing of, ele of elections in 1997. After the Supreme Court's disastrous Citizen United decision in 2010, Sarah joined the board of Free Speech for People and then went on to become the Strategic Development Director for several years. Sarah led many other campaigns to make philanthropy more responsive. She advocated for more media policy funding. She worked to encourage foundations to vote their proxies and to exercise their fiduciary rights and she continued to advocate for grassroots grant making. She continued her advocacy for environmental justice funding and mission aligned investing as a program associate at Boulder Giving. In 2008, when the markets collapsed, Sarah had passed her level one chartered financial analysis exam and was training for a career in impact investing. Unlike many who were paralyzed with fear about their own financial security, Sarah seized the moment, seized the opportunity to challenge dominant myths about market efficiency and privatization. She pivoted and redirected her energy to an emerging, and you might say fringe, effort to advance a narrative about the need for systemic economic reform. She served as the first coordinator of the New Economy Network for four years, and not surprisingly, Sarah was again perceptive. The New Economy Narrative, which links economic inequality, environmental crisis, and financial instability as outputs of an economic system hooked on growth and private profit, has spread and is now moving into the political and academ academic mainstream. It is my pleasure to introduce Sarah Stranahan, who has been my employee, my funder, and most importantly, my friend. Thank you. 
Gail's quite organized. <laughs> I love her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank oh, we need, they want a picture. So oh, yeah. Here, Mm -hmm. yeah. From one spitfire to another. 